Should the Jets bench Zach Wilson? Should they fire Nathaniel Hackett? How do we fix this offense? We'll discuss today on Locked On Jets. You are Locked On Jets, your daily New York Jets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome. This is the Lockdown Jets podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. It's Tuesday, November 14th, 2023, and I'm your host, John B. from gangreennation.com. Thank you for making the show your first listen or first watch every day. Subscribe to the show for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you'll get new episodes as soon as they're posted. If you enjoy the show and are listening on a podcast source, give it a five-star review. And if you enjoy the show and are watching on YouTube, give this episode a big thumbs up. These things help us out and help other Jets fans find the show. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you buy a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50-plus infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. Today we're going to talk about ideas to fix the New York Jets offense. The Jets not playing so well on offense. They're on a two-game losing streak right now, and the offense has not scored a touchdown in either of those losses. In fact, if you want to go back even further, the Jets were very lucky to beat the New York Giants two weeks ago, and they only scored one touchdown in that game, and that was a big play by Brees Hall. In fact, you, know, you want to go back even further? I mean, it's been a really long time. It's been over a month since the Jets have had a multi-play touchdown drive. Every touchdown drive the Jets have had over the last uh, you know month, month and a half has been a one-play drive where Brees Hall scored a touchdown. You know That's not going to get it done in the NFL. This is a league where you got to put up points, and the Jets are wasting a really good defense. So we're going to talk about some ideas that have been floated that could potentially fix the offense. Although, I mean, I, I think there's only so much the Jets will be able to do. And I think when an offense struggles, the number one place you look is the quarterback position. And of course, on Sunday night against the Raiders, Zach Wilson threw a critical interception, which I think was his fault. I mean, I've seen some people say Alan Lazard should have fought back to the ball, but I don't see how he could have on that play. And you, you know, I'm no like Lazard fan. I'm not, I'm no, not a person who's going to go out of my way to defend Alan Lazard, but it looked to me like the ball was already in the air. And I watched it on the film yesterday. You know, he was, he had to like stop his momentum because he had to stop. He was like finishing his route. So I don't think there was any way he could uh, break back to the ball. I think Zach Wilson just lost track of the linebacker and the numbers, numbers are ugly for the jets. I mean, I told you the issues that they've had scoring. I mean, right now, Zach Wilson, he ranks 30th in the NFL in yards per attempt. He ranks 30th in passer rating. He ranks 30th in QBR. He ranks 31st in completion percentage. It's not very good right now for Zach Wilson. And if you've been following the show this year, you know, I, you've probably heard me be a little bit easier on Zach Wilson than I was his first two seasons in the league. And I, there's a reason for that. Heading into last season, I think expectations were pretty high for Zach. He was entering year two. The hope was that that would be the year where you'd at least see, see some degree of improvement, you know, even if the ship had kind of sailed on him ever being a special quarterback, I think last year the hope was at least he could be a competent quarterback. Of course, that did not play out. This year, the expectations were that he would not play. I think we've all kind of come to grips with what Zach Wilson is as a quarterback. So I just can't get on him as much because, you know, what are you expecting? He's essentially a generic backup quarterback. I don't think he's any better than you know most of the backup quarterbacks in the league, but I don't think he's really any worse than any of the backup quarterbacks in the league. He's kind of just a product of his surroundings. If the Jets put better pieces around him, you know, the team probably would have more success. Jets have not put good pieces around him, aside from Garrett Wilson and aside from Brees Hall. So I just can't get up said that much about how he's playing because my expectations aren't high. We know what he is. They've put him in a bad situation. He's not somebody who's going to lift the team. I mean, we know he's not the quarterback of the future for this team. So I just can't find it in myself to criticize him too much. We know he's an issue though. We know he's not a guy who, who makes a big difference. And I gave you the numbers. The statistics are bad. And when an offense struggles, people are immediately going to look to the quarterback it's not completely fair, but it's also not completely unfair because the quarterback's the most important player on the team. So should the Jets bench Zach Wilson? Well, the issue is that I don't know that they have a better option. I mean, Trevor Simeon, who's still on the practice squad, and maybe there's something there that we don't know about because 
I would have thought Trevor Simeon's much better than Tim Boyle, but the Jets keep Simeon on the practice squad. Now, it could be the case where the Jets just are making a mistake. They've made plenty of personnel mistakes over the last couple of years. So I'm not saying that it's necessarily right, but I think it speaks to where Trevor Simeon is as a quarterback right now. You know, last uh, the last time Trevor Simeon played, it was a couple of years ago with the Saints, and people point to the touchdown interception split. He had 11 touchdowns and four interceptions, but he wasn't an efficient quarterback. If you look at his yards per attempt were low, his completion percentage wasn't good. I mean, he had a hot streak in the red zone. That's really the difference. I mean, that's really the, the reason the numbers look uh, respectable. He's never been a particularly efficient quarterback. I'm not even sure he's better than Zach Wilson right now. And I think this goes back to something I talk a lot about when we discuss should the Jets fire a coach or should the Jets you know, fire a general manager. The easiest thing in the world is to get rid of the guy who's not doing his job. You know, firing somebody is easy. The challenge is replacing them with somebody better. Now, in the case of a bad coach or a bad GM, there's usually somebody available. You know, you can usually point to somebody out there and say either that person's proven to be better or there's reason to believe that coach or GM candidate could be better than what we have right now. At the quarterback position in season, you don't really have that big a pool of candidates. I mean, it's so bad right now that I've heard people complain that the Jets did not sign Carson Wentz. I mean, is Carson Wentz the guy you, you want to save your season? A, a guy who has been run out of three different cities in the last three years? Three different jobs as a starting quarterback have ended in catastrophe with Carson Wentz. That's not the guy to save the season, but it shows you how limited your selection is once you get into the season. It shows you that you just can't fix it after you get into the season. The time to fix the backup quarterback position was during the offseason because there actually were some good players available in free agency, maybe even a trade candidate or two, who could have given you a higher level of play than Zach Wilson. And the Jets could have afforded it because... Aaron Rodgers only counted $8.888 million against the cap this year. You know, he wanted to be number eight, so they, I'm sure that that was the reason they set his cap hit up to be that instead of $9 million. And then uh, Zach Wilson, who's you know not super cheap, but still on a rookie contract. So the Jets could have afforded a better backup quarterback, and they did not do it. I still don't know why. I mean, was it that they were afraid, like they get criticized because the people would say that, oh, well, you missed on the number two overall pick. He's not even your backup. You picked him second overall, and he's so bad he can't even be your backup. I mean, I don't understand what the point of that would be, but I don't understand what the point of bringing Zach in as the backup was. I think that you could justify a quarterback change. So, and I want to make that clear. I'm not saying that I'm adamantly opposed to benching Zach Wilson. I think his play has justified a benching. I think that there'd be no issue with that. I just don't know that you're going to put in somebody who's going to be better. And that's the whole point. The point is not to punish Zach Wilson. The point is to actually improve the team. I don't think Trevor Simeon's an improvement. So you get into a situation where you ask what the point is. I think there's one conceivable point to benching a quarterback, even if you're not sure he's going to be an upgrade. And that's, you're just trying to provide a spark. That's that you're in a situation that's so bad that you're saying, you know what? We just have to make a change for the sake of change. We have to try and shake things up. We have to just try try something, try anything. And in that sense, you know, I don't think it would necessarily be the worst move in the world. I just don't know that it would really last. I think maybe for a week or two, it could fire people up. You know, maybe you send a message that people are being held accountable here. So if you don't do your job, you're heading to the bench. But in the long run, talent wins out in this league. And I just don't see it having that big of an impact. You know, it's a league where talent matters. And the Jets just don't have enough talent at the quarterback position right now, which leads to the question, maybe then should the change be on the coaching staff? Well, head you're on the Lockdown Jets podcast. We're going to focus on that. Should Nathaniel Hackett be fired? I think of the options in front of the Jets, this might be the one that could at least make a difference to a certain extent. And I'll tell you why, continuing this month, this, this Tuesday edition of Lockdown Jets. This episode of Lockdown Jets is brought to you by Jace Medical. The Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use. All it takes to get a Jace case is to fill out a simple online form and in some cases jump on a quick call with a board-certified physician. Get ongoing care from physicians on any treatment-related questions. Doctor created, doctor recommended. Go online right now at jacemedical.com to receive your 12-month supply on your daily medication. And remember to use code LOCKEDON at checkout for a discount as well. A verified customer had this to say about Jace. 
I am thankful for this service. Supply chain issues caused me to cut pills in half to have it. I ordered most of my daily meds with a year supply. I also ordered an antibiotic kit. I feel secure now. Prices are lower than at local pharmacies. I highly recommend this for everyone. If you or someone you love would get peace of mind by having a year supply of any daily med, go to jacemedical.com to see if it's offered for you. Again, it's jacemedical.com, J-A-S-E medical.com. And remember to use promo code Locked On at checkout. Again, it's Locked On, it's one word with no space, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N for $20 off on your purchase. Thank you so much for making Locked On Jets your first listener, first watch every day. And a big shout out to you every day. This is a daily podcast covering the New York Jets. We have new episodes each day through the week, Monday through Friday, and then bonus episodes as needed as news breaks after big games. Really appreciate your support. And it's not an easy time to be a New York Jets fan as their offense is struggling 30th in points per game. And it just keeps getting worse. Jets can't put the ball in the end zone. Jets have now gone almost three full games without an offensive touchdown. So how do we fix this problem? We've talked about perhaps replacing the quarterback. I think it would be justified. I don't know it's going to do a whole lot to help the team. How about firing the offensive coordinator, Nathaniel Hackett? And I know people, what the people are going to say is, well, he's Aaron Rodgers' friend. You know, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers will get angry. Well, you know, I don't really care about that right now. Aaron Rodgers should be apologizing to the Jets for his role in having Nathaniel Hackett run this offense because Nathaniel Hackett's awful. I, mean, he's, I, I just can't get over thinking this through. Last year, the Jets were fifth from the bottom in the NFL in points per game. So, I mean, look, there there are only four teams worse. Only four teams scored fewer points than the Jets last year. What was the Jets' response? They went out and got the guy who ran one of the one of the four offenses that was worse than them last year. And you know, I think back to the summer when Sean Payton criticized Nathaniel Hackett. He said it was what he did in Denver was one of the worst coaching jobs in modern NFL history. And you know, at the time, we said we talked about that. We said. He probably should not have said that. It was a pretty unprofessional thing to attack another coach like that. But I don't think anything he said was substantively wrong. And if you watch the way Hackett runs this offense, it's just an ineffective offense. And, you know, what really strikes me is that this offense is always better when they have to go away from the Hackett game plan. You know, when sometimes when they fall behind and they have to get rid of the conservative approach or, the, you know, they go into the two minute drill. People have, people have talked about how how much better the Jets offense seems to be in the hurry up. Well, you know, those are that's situations where Hackett's not really in control. That's what it says to me. It doesn't say to me that Zach Wilson's great in the hurry up, so the Jets, Jets, Jets should go hurry up nonstop. It says to me that the Jets' offense is better when Nathaniel Hackett's not in charge. And, you know, I, I can give you a couple of statistics here that really speak to this. We know that one of the most efficient ways to throw the ball is play action. I, I feel like a broken record. If you're listening every day. You've heard me say this over and over, but it needs to be said again because the, you're hearing it, but the Jets aren't hearing it. Zach Wilson is averaging three yards per attempt more uh, when he tries play action versus regular drop back. So Jets are doing three yards per play better Zach, when they're running play action on passes versus regular passes. Three yards. So you would think that with that big of a gap, the Jets would be running play action nonstop. They're not even in the top 20 in play action rate. They're not even running play action on 20% of their passes. How crazy is that? And it's almost like they they view it as a gimmick. It's like one of those things where they, they're saying, and this is just my guess, I'm not saying anybody from the Jets is saying this, but it's almost like they're saying, well, the reason it works so well is that we, we catch them by surprise. No, you, it's a very efficient way of playing football. The numbers back this up. There, there are analytics that show play action passing is more effective than regular drop back passing. And it's not like you need to be somebody crunching numbers on you know some database to figure this out. It's really simple. The guys up front on defense, every single play, the linebackers, also the defensive linemen, but especially the linebackers, have two assignments on a given play. They have an assignment against the run and an assignment against the pass. Their assignment against the run typically requires them to move in, to move, move towards the line of scrimmage at the snap. Their assignment against the pass typically requires them to backtrack because they need to get into the passing lanes or they need to find the man who's going out into a route that they're covering. So when you force them to play the run immediately, they're moving up which means that they're not playing their passing assignment. So first of all, the guys they're supposed to be covering are running wide open. But second of all, the passing lanes are bigger because they're not dropping back into their zones. This is common sense stuff. It also makes the reads easier for the quarterback because you've got bigger windows, but also because you're faking the ball to a running back and sometimes a tight end staying and you have less receivers out in the pattern. So it's simpler reads. And this is what a quarterback like Zach Wilson needs. We don't run play action with the Jets though. 
we view it as a gimmick. Uh, you know, uh, let me give you another number. We always talk about Zach Wilson's struggles. We talk about how this, we, you know, you, you, you see this every week now. It's a staple of Jets games. You know, three years ago, it was how Frank Gore was 37 years old and, you know, playing just, to, you know, still in the NFL and, you know, looks the exact same as he did when he came into the league. This year, the staple of Jets games is their historically bad third down offense. Well, as I say frequently, the best third down offense is not getting to third down. It's to move the chains on first and second down. And that means aggressive play calling. That means coming out, throwing it. And you may say, well, why would you want to throw it on first and second down? Why would you want to throw it on first down? Jets have a bad passing game. Zach Wilson's numbers on first down this year are very good. He's got a 65.3% completion percentage. He's averaging 7.8 yards per attempt. His passer rating is 87.7. Those are all much better than his overall numbers. And in part, it's because teams are expecting the Jets to run because they run it so much on first down. You know, in neutral situations, you know, the Jets numbers are a little skewed. On the whole this season, they've thrown it more than they've run it on first down. But that's also in part because of game situation, because they've been behind in a lot of games so they've had to throw it in neutral situations in situations where the game is close jets are running the ball an awful lot on first down especially early in the game teams you know are, can pick up on this predictable offense they can go out and stop it so they can move guys up but that makes it easier to throw the ball and that's why i think part why zach wilson's having so much more success on first down than he is on third down because on third down, teams teams are expecting the pass so they can play defense and zach wilson's not good enough to decipher tough coverages or you know, complex split schemes on first down when things are simple, when the team's playing the run, it's easier to complete passes. So they're not putting the offense in good situations. They're not putting Zach Wilson in good situations. To me, this is the one move that could at least have some sort of difference for this reason, because you put somebody else in at least maybe they'll you know run more play action. At least maybe they'll be more aggressive on first downs until the game situation dictate, you know, before the game situation dictates it. Now, the one problem with this is that you're the most obvious candidate would be the passing game coordinator, Todd Downing, who doesn't exactly have a great track record himself. You know, I talked about how there were four teams in the NFL that scored less points than the Jets last year. Downing ran the Tennessee Titans, which was a team that did score more than the Jets, but it scored two more points over the course of the entire season. So that's not two points per game. That's two points total more than the Jets scored last year. He's not much of an offensive coordinator himself, but I do think maybe he could be better than Hackett. You know, I look at this offense and it's like, unless Garrett Wilson moves the chains or unless Brees Hall makes a big run, you know, nothing's really happening. Then you get into the situation where Hackett has to throw out the game plan. You know, sometimes it works. Sometimes when the Jets are behind them, they have to throw when they get into the two minute drill. I mean, probably three or four times Sunday night, Zach Wilson just threw a smoke route to Garrett Wilson, which also worked. And a smoke route is a play that the quarterback essentially makes a decision at the line. He looks over at his wide receiver. If the, if the corner is giving too much cushion to the wide receiver, he just takes the snap and throws it to the receiver. You know, sometimes it's a passing play and the quarterback just makes a signal. Sometimes it's actually a run play and you see the offensive line run block. Again, in another situation where the Jets are having success, that has nothing to do with Nathaniel Hackett. It's all about Zach Wilson's reads at the line. Jets need to get better play calling here. And look, I don't know if it's going to fix anything. I don't know that it's going to make the Jets that much better, but it certainly should make the Jets. It can at least make the Jets do things that make more sense on offense. So I'd like to see that. Now, head here on the Locked On Jets podcast. We'll close out our show. We'll talk about some other ideas. There are some playing time changes that people have suggested. How big of a difference will they make? I mean, I think the Jets have pretty much made most of the playing time changes that would improve the team. But we'll go into a few more as we continue this Tuesday edition of Locked On Jets. This episode of Locked On Jets is brought to you by FanDuel. Score this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. So you might be saying, I'm a Jets fan. My team's not going to win. Well, you don't just have to bet on the Jets. Now, the Jets are about a touchdown underdog against the Buffalo Bills this coming weekend. The Buffalo Bills team is not playing that well. So the fact that Jets are such a big underdog suggests... The Lions don't really respect the Jets all that much, but there are plenty of ways you can bet on FanDuel. In addition to spreads, they have player props, they have over-unders, they have even more than that. So, you know, maybe there's a player prop on Brees Hall or Garrett Wilson you, you want to put your money down on. Well, you know, you can get 150 bucks back if you get your bet right. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. This is the Locked On Jets podcast here on this Tuesday. We're talking about ideas to fix the Jets offense. The reality of the situation, though, is that 10 weeks into the season, that's not the time to be making changes. 
I mean, I'm not saying that there are things that are, it's impossible to make a few tweaks here or there, but I'm saying that the team you have is essentially the team that you have. The time to fix your team is in March and April. The time to fix your team is not really in November. And I think that's one of the challenges for the Jets. I mean, we've talked about potential playing time changes all season long, and the Jets have made a number. You know, I think for all the criticism the coaching staff deserves, I don't think you can say fairly that they refuse to bench guys who aren't performing. I think I don't think you can say that they refuse to shake up personnel. I mean, this past weekend, they got Billy Turner out of there. They had to do it. Turner was a disaster against the Chargers. The problem is that, and you see this in many cases, the replacements just aren't any better. I mean, they put Billy they put Billy Turner to the bench. They moved Max Mitchell out to right tackle. They put Xavier Newman at right guard. Well, you know, it didn't work that well. There just aren't many options. When we talk about the offensive line, I think back to the early part of the season. You know, heading into week three, people were saying the Jets have to bench Dwayne Brown in order to save the season. And then it, it kind of worked itself out because Dwayne Brown was injured. That was week three. Eight weeks later, I'm hearing people say the Jets need to get Dwayne Brown back to save the season. Maybe they do. I mean, maybe Dwayne Brown is better than what they have right now. But, I mean, it kind of speaks to how few options there are for the Jets. They benched Dalvin Cook. And, you know, Michael Carter is now getting criticism because a really bad block he threw turned into a penalty uh, that, caught, that wiped out a first down, essentially ended a drive on Sunday night. And the one thing I'll say is I don't understand why Michael Carter is the third down back for the Jets. He's not a great receiver. He's a really bad blocker. And I think people, when people say Carter should be benched, it's not completely unfair. The only question is who replaces him because Brees can't play every down. Dalvin Cook is Dalvin Cook. I mean, he's pretty much finished. I mean, yeah, I've seen, I mean, you know, we're getting desperate when people see Dalvin Cook, you know, have like four decent carries and people are saying we need to get him in the lineup more. Dalvin Cook is finished. Dalvin Cook's not going to help anybody. So you go with any, Izzy Abanaconda, I guess, and I would like to see Izzy in the lineup. I mean, I think the Jets need to put more speed on the field and Izzy certainly provides that, but. Again, it shows you that there aren't really a lot of great options. Brees Hall's not necessarily a great pass blocker. Dalvin Cook's never been a great pass blocker. And through his career, he's got a reputation for actually being pretty bad as a pass blocker. So there just aren't really a lot of good options for this team. Now the question is, do you bench Alan Lazard? Well, who are you putting in for Alan Lazard? Are you putting Jason Brownlee? Do you think an undrafted free agent is going to be better than Lazard? And again, I'm not a Lazard guy. I'm not somebody who's rushing to defend Alan Lazard's honor. I just think you have to be realistic about what you can do. And this is one of the reasons I, I just feel bad about where the Jets are right now. I, I just don't think the season's really going anywhere because you can replace guys, but the question is whether the guy you're whether the replacement's going to be an upgrade. I think in many cases the answer is simply no for this team. You know, CJ people want to bench CJ Uzama, and I understand that. I think Uzama actually, and I'm again, Uzama's not a guy I'm rushing to defend. Uzama makes way too much money. But he's actually, prior to Sunday, was having a pretty decent season as a blocker. You want to replace him with Jeremy Ruckert? I can understand that. Ruckert's a you know, promising young player, but he's coming off a pretty rough stretch of games himself. You know, it's easy to say bench the guy who's not playing well, but if the guy who replaces them isn't any better, what are you really doing for your football team? I, I would argue not a whole lot. And this is the dilemma the Jets find themselves in. People want to figure out ways to fix things. I mean, look, the season's not over. For all of their struggles, the Jets are only one game out of the final playoff spot. It's just there are no readily apparent fixes for this team, aside from maybe moving on from Nathaniel Hackett. And unfortunately, it sounds like the Jets aren't going to be willing to do that. But even getting rid of Hackett will only improve the team so much because the personnel is just not good enough. That's how the Garrett and Brees, this offense really is struggling, and you're just replacing one problem with another. Anyway, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but I think that's how things are. But this has been the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day is our motto. As always, if you enjoyed the show, hit the subscribe button where you're watching or listening so that you'll never miss an episode. If you enjoy the show and are listening on the podcast, or else give it a five-star review. And if you're watching on YouTube and enjoy the show, give this episode a big thumbs up. These things help us out, help other Jets fans find the podcast. Hope you have a great Tuesday, everybody. Send in your mailbag questions. Tomorrow we'll have our weekly mailbag show.